very long. So we're doing chapter 17, the respiratory system. Um, there is like 61 questions total in this exam. What? 28 multiple choice and 38 labeling. So the majority of it is labeling. So you're going to have to know the two different types of divisions of the respiratory system. We have the upper respiratory tract as well as the lower respiratory tract. <clears throat> so when you go into the see your doctor because you've had a cold for two weeks or so and it's runny nose and coughing, it could just be an upper respiratory tract infection. But if it goes down further, that bacteria has traveled down the trachea into the lungs and maybe you end up with pneumonia, then that would be a lower respiratory tract infection. So that's what they're talking when they say, talking about when they say upper and lower. What's included in the upper is the nasal cavity as well as the pharynx and the larynx. We're going to break that pharynx up into three different parts in a minute. And then trachea and then the branches of the bronchi as well as the primary mover or the muscle for breathing, the diaphragm. And you can see that the trachea is kind of a portion of it is in the upper, but when we get to the top part or the apex of those lungs, then that's considered lower. Looking at the upper respiratory tract, uh, we have talked about we have talked about the sinuses before when we were doing the skeletal system and we're talking about the skull. Sinuses needed to make the skull lighter because they are air-filled open holes in the skull. But they also do other things. One, they are lined with a mucous membrane, so they can secrete mucus. So when you're sick, they may be secreting mucus and draining that down into the nasal cavity. But what they're really for, not only to make it a little lighter as far as the skull goes, but gives you that sound quality or that voice resonance. So when you're talking or singing, it's the quality of your voice, how it sounds. When the air comes through the nasal cavity and then flows through the sinuses, it'll give you that sound. So when you're sick and those mucous membranes are packed with mucus, and then you kind of sound nasally when you talk. It's because it's all filled and that air is not running through those cavities. At the very top of the nasal cavity, you have what are called olfactory nerves. So these are receptors that are coming down and poking into the nasal cavity and detecting smell. So they'll take that and send that stimulus to the brain, and then the brain will interpret what you're smelling. When air is coming through the very first portion of the respiratory tract, the nasal cavity, We've got some things going on there. So one, what is, what is found in your nares? What do you see? So what's in your nose? Hair. hair. What's hair for, really? Yeah, it'll catch dust. It'll keep things out. Yeah, so it's there. So what happens when we get old with that hair? It definitely doesn't fall out. It does. We get a lot more of it. So you've, you've seen those elderly people where it's all growing out, out and they don't trim and it's all crazy looking. What is that really for though? Because what's happening with your immune system as you're getting older? It does. So we kind of compensate for some things by doing other things like overcompensating some hair where it shouldn't be uh, to protect ourselves. So we have hair that will trap dust and particles. Inside this mucous membrane, because our eyes, our nose, any opening to the atmosphere or the environment is a mucous membrane. The mouth is a mucous membrane. We have goblet cells inside that mucous membrane. And if it's a mucous membrane, what is it producing? It's making mucus. And what does mucus do? What's the point of it? <coughs> Be gross and nasty. Yeah, it'll trap dust, it'll trap anything foreign, bacteria, viruses, anything, it'll trap trying to get into our body. It's very sticky, so it traps it, and then it can't go further into our respiratory system. Um, so, air coming through, we can trap things with the hair and the mucus from those goblet cells. We have little folds that come down into the nasal cavity that are called concha. 
and those are moistened, so they're wet, and they're very vascular, so they're warm. They got lots of blood flow to them. So when we're breathing in, taking in air, we're humidifying it, so we're moistening it, as well as we're warming the air through the nasal cavity, and it's because of those guys that are hanging down. So if you were to push your nose up and look up into in the mirror, you can see some of those folds in the nasal cavity that are hanging down. They're important for that. Uh, let's see, hard palate, you can put your tongue up in the roof of your mouth and you can feel your hard palate. You can slide it further back and then you can transition and feel that soft palate. The soft palate does move. It kind of helps push food back where it's supposed to be every time we swallow and help it slide on down through the esophagus. So it does have a purpose. Um, the, we have here, when we get into this slide here, which we'll, I talk about in the next lecture, we have that pharynx broken down into three parts. So you have the nasopharynx, the very pop, top portion of that pharynx, and it has your auditory uh, opening there, or your eustachian tube. Your book calls it your auditory tubes, but it's also called your eustachian tubes. So they're connected to the air, and they're, they're found in the oral pharynx. I'll talk about those in the next lecture and the importance of them. Um, up here in the upper respiratory tract with the mucus, we also have lining those epithelial cells. On top of those epithelial cells, we have cilia. So that cilia in the upper respiratory tract is constantly beating and moving that mucus that's up here down so we can swallow it or spit it out. Normally, you're sitting here swallowing it constantly. So you're swallowing snot and boogers and whatever else. Okay. That, and then that should take me to the next part of the